Let's talk about defense. Fighting game matches have three distinct phases that you can find yourself in. Neutral, when neither player has an advantage. The moment when you're at advantage, so you can continue your game plan or you're able to put the pressure on your opponent. And finally, the moments where you're in disadvantage, so you have to deal with what the enemy is throwing at you. I've already talked about neutral on this channel, so why don't we look at one of the other stages of the fight for a while. And, of course, because I'm an absolute alpha gamer, we're going to start with the one that's most important and closest to my heart. Defense, baby! Yeah, that's right, the rushdown monkey got a soft spot for the down back position on the stick. Defense is something that every fighting game needs in some way, with the greatest fighting games of all time having amazing defensive options. The biggest clip in the FGC is literally based around a defensive option, and we'll definitely get to it. But let's start at the ground floor, the most basic of basic defensive options. The thing that no anime player is able to do. Let's talk about blocking. Basically, every fighting game has some way for you to stop incoming damage. The most common way for this to be done is by blocking. The two most popular ways that this is done is either by holding back or holding a dedicated block button. While blocking, your character will either take a small amount or no damage from the incoming attack and will be able to return back to neutral faster than if the attack is connected. Can't wait for somebody to find a move that's positive on block but negative on hit somehow. Blocking is one of the most important things in fighting games and having a fighting game without a way to block is just generally pretty rare, especially in the world of traditional 2D fighting games. But here's the thing, we have two different ways to block, holding back or holding the button. So I ask you, which of these is superior? This. This one. This one's easily the better one. Holding back to block is the default in most fighting games, and for good reason. While holding back, you're not only blocking, but you're forcing yourself to give up space. In traditional 2D games like Street Fighter, the amount of space you give your opponent is as vital as your positioning and the pokes that you land, as giving up too much space will force you to back yourself into the corner, which can lead to you losing the match. Trust me, it's happened to me. A lot. This can be subverted by holding down back to force yourself to crouch, so you're blocking and standing your ground. Round. This is much more relevant in anime and versus fighting games where a lot of low hitting moves reach very far and come out too fast for you to react to them. This means you have to change your stick position in order to block an overhead so you have an active level of participation on defense when reacting to overheads. This also extends to your enemy changing sides and hitting you from behind as you would need to move the stick to the other position in order to block it correctly. We call these high low and left right mix ups and they're an essential tool on offense for opening somebody up. Up. These mix-ups lead to intense moments for defenders as you try to figure out the correct position you need to hold in order to block your opponent's attack. However, what about a block button? Well, if a game has a block button, then it means that as long as you're holding it, your character will stand still and block. This had the adverse side effect of not forcing you to give up ground if you want to high block, as you can just stand there. Low blocking is still encouraged in these games due to lows always being faster than overheads, but you can just hold down directly and the block button meaning that outside of motion inputs, what's the point of the down back position anymore? Also, they just completely remove left right mix up. Since you're in a binary state of blocking, now your character will just automatically block the left right cross up so the aggressor has less opportunities to open you up. Plus, it just feels like crap, man. Like, okay, let me spell out why the block button feels bad for me. Left hand controls movement and defense, right hand make combo go burr. Why are we suddenly making it so that my right hand makes a combo, but also my right hand makes the block happen? It just feels off. Well, that's only a problem, because you play on stick. Good point, but also, fuck you. Games have found ways to add more functionality to the block button, like Grand Blue having characters be able to do a spot dodge with it, and some games are having hybrids of holding back and a block button. But in those cases, the block button still gives you cross-up protection when holding back doesn't, so why would you not just hold the button? In the end, it's just personal preference, but you're on the Gecko Scroll channel, buddy. This is my opinion, so now it's law. Anyway, we'll be here all day if I keep talking about this stupid button, so let's move on to something else. Now, just blocking on its own can be a little bit boring, so what can developers do in order to spice it up a little bit? Well, let me introduce you to the concept of push blocking. Push blocking works different depending on the game that is implemented in, however, the basic concept is generally the same. If you press the buttons when the attack hits, it will cause you and your enemy to move away from each other, with the hopes being that their next attack misses. In games like Blaze Blue Central Fiction and Guilty Gear, you can do this 
with faultless defense and barrier block, which causes your enemy to move away from you slightly with each attack they do. However, in games like Marvel vs. Capcom and Blade Blue Cross Tag Battle, you can press two buttons to activate advancing guard or reject guard, both of which push your enemy much further back on the screen. Most of the time, these moves take a resource. Faultless defense, for example, uses your super meter and barrier has its own specific gauge you need to look out for in central fiction. However, this isn't always the case. Advancing guards cost no resources at all, so you can do it freely. So let's say fuck it to blocking and get this guy off of us. Guard cancelling is a technique in which you end your guard with a move that, if it connects, returns the match to neutral. In Dragon Ball Fighters, you can do this by pressing forward along with an assist while blocking to tag in one of your teammates and get the enemy off of you. You can do a similar thing in cross tag battle, but it's nowhere near as elegant. Yeah! Both of these cost a resource, and if the enemy blocks them, then they're able to get a free combo on you, which could lead to more damage than if you simply let them hit you in the block string, so you can't be predictable with it. However, other games like Street Fighter V have a version of guard cancel that will return you to neutral if your enemy blocks them. Okay, well, they're negative on block, so your enemy still has advantage, but they still don't get a combo on you, so it's basically fine. Both of these take some sort of resource, so you'll have to give up something in order to get out of the combo, which is cool. Alright, so that's like what? Most of the video we've been talking about different ways to block? I think it's time that we moved on to some other defensive techniques. For example, why would you need to block if your opponent never gets to hit you? Movement is something that can be hard in fighting games for new players, but once it's mastered, it's used for literally everything in the game. You get your offensive options like wave dashing, cross ups, and just fucking holding forward, but there's more to movement than just getting in on your opponent. In most traditional 2D fighters, where you are on the screen is very important to conducting your game plan. Some characters want to be really close up, some want to play it a bit further back, some want to be between those two, and some of them don't really care. There is something that all of them are able to do, though. If you know the space where your enemy wants to be and stand just outside of it, you're able to do this. While this does look like something you do to keep your hands active while your brain is thinking, it's actually got a very strategic use. It's called shimmying, and what you're doing is walking into your opponent's striking range and then quickly walking back out of it. If you keep walking in, this could tempt the enemy to try and hit you, but since you walked back out, it causes them to miss. We call this a whiff. If the enemy whiffs, then they're not able to block until they recovered from their move, meaning that you're able to punish them for it. Some games also allow you to cover greater distances with things such as dashing and rolling. While their properties are definitely different, the idea is that you can move your character a greater distance towards or away from your enemy in a short amount of time in exchange for some recovery frames at the end. Unless we're talking about Tekken, but we'll get to that. Of course, if you can backdash, you're able to force your enemy to whiff an attack easier because you can cover more ground. Causing your enemy to whiff is both a defensive and offensive technique. It's defensive as you don't have to deal with being put in block stun or chip damage, but you also cause your enemy to open themselves up for a combo that could do more damage than any of their pokes ever could. So getting your opponent to whiff is a pretty powerful tool. So how do we do it in other games? Like if you try to shimmy in some of the anime games, you uh, you probably won't get the same result. While well, anime fighting games generally have these larger, harder to avoid hitboxes because their options for movement at your disposal are are more freeing than your traditional games. Along with being able to block in the air, depending on the game, most anime games have a double jump and an air dash. Double jumping is just a second jump in the air, and the air dash is a dash that you can perform in the air, just in case the terms weren't self-explanatory enough. With these, air movement no longer becomes a restrictive arc like it is in traditional 2D games or even 3D games, which we'll get to. In anime games, the air is your friend, as anti-airing is honestly much harder. Like, let's compare anti-airing in Street Fighter and Guilty Gear. In Street Fighter, if you see your enemy jumping, they're going to land near you, you can use a move that lands upwards in order to hit them out of the air. In Guilty Gear, your enemy can change their trajectory at any point of their jump arc, as well as being able to block in the air. With this greater movement, you can force your enemy to whiff their anti-air, and since they're in recovery, you can hit them while they recover. Air dashes are also able to create and close distance much faster, as they're typically very fast and recover faster than a standard dash. But what about more grounded 3D games? Well, in 2D anime games and versus games, the air is your best friend, in 3D games, the air is that bully from high school who pulls your shirt over your face and kicks you down the stairs. Not only can you not block in the air, but your jumps are terrible and only being able to really avoid low attacks, and your air moves are just laughingly bad. So the air is a no-fly zone, what can you do then? Remember back when we talked about dashing? 
Tekken's backdashes can be cancelled into anything, so not only are they extremely safe, as when you backdash you're automatically blocking, but you can also cancel the backdash into a crouch. With this you return to neutral so you're able to do another backdash after it. This is the ultimate power of Korean backdashing, and is extremely useful for the neutral game of Tekken, as you can cause moves to whiff much more easily. It's also just really cool to pull off. So, we got blocking, we got movement, by the law of good video structure, we need a third. I wonder what the final defensive strategy could be. Huh. Hey bud, I got zero HP, three bars a meter, and enough caffeine in my system to floor a horse. You know what time it is. Woo! If the other two options seem like baby shit to you, then there's one final way to deal with being on the defense, and that's just to dragon punch your way to victory. The DP, or dragon punch, is an invincible move that can be executed by doing a forward, down, down forward motion. You cannot block through the duration of the input, so you're holding forward. However, once you execute the move, you can't be hit until the move is basically over. In Street Fighter, a player is not able to be hit while getting up. So, if you input the move while your character is standing up from getting knocked down, there's no chance for your enemy to hit you once you wake up. This is called a reversal DP and it has no downsides, so you should just do it every time. Trust me. Trust me. TRUST ME! Depending on the game, this invincibility can also apply to supers, meaning that if you have the meter, you can do a super on wake up and use those invincibility frames to dodge your opponent's attacks, and once again, there's no downsides to this! TRUST ME! Okay, so... There may be some downsides to these moves. Both DPs and supers have extremely long recovery times, meaning that if your opponent sees them coming and blocks the attack, they'll be able to easily counter-attack and take off way more life than you would have taken if you landed the DP. And with supers, you lose either all or a lot of your meter, so if they don't connect, not only do you lose a bunch of life, but now you've left yourself high and dry in the meter department. This doesn't apply to every game though. Tekken 7 doesn't have a meter system tied to most of its characters, but characters still have a super type of move known as Rage Art. Once your health gets very low, you enter a state called Rage in which you deal more damage and can do a Rage Art and Rage Drive. Rave Drives, also known as the blue stuff, are very powerful standard used moves that characters have. Each one is different, but a lot of them are used for combo tools or a high damage and mix up option. Rage Arts are overall pretty similar. You press the button, the cute lady goes, you hit the guy and suddenly they lose 40% of their health. Congratulations, you're good at Tekken. Rage Arts don't have any invincibility like other fighting game supers, and Tekken doesn't have any invincibility while you're getting up, or even when you're just laying there taking a nap. So what makes them good? Well, every Rage Heart has super armor on it. Meaning that if you're hit while starting the animation, no, you weren't. What are you talking about? Hold this L, dickhead. Armor still has your character take damage, but you're able to power through some hits before you do. General armor means that you take about one to three hits before your character gets put into stun. Super armor means that you can't be taken out of the startup of the move. While armor doesn't start frame one, if you see your opponent has a gap in their pressure, you might be able to armor through it and take your turn. Though, again, be advised that if you're not careful, you could just die. So yeah, that's every defensive mechanic. There's definitely no other ones. None at all, definitely not something that's basically defined fighting games for an era that I'm forgetting. No, sir, not at all. That's that's definitely all of them. Uh, yeah, huh, definitely super duper. That's all of them. There's, there's no other ones that I need to talk about. The parry in Street Fighter Third Strike is better than sex. There isn't anyone who actively plays fighting games that doesn't know about the parry mechanic in Third Strike. If you press forward just as an attack is about to hit you, you take zero damage, you recover quickly, and your opponent needs to go and change their pants because they just shit themselves a little bit. Parry is probably the riskiest defensive technique we've talked about, as if you don't land it, you take a bunch of damage because you have to stop blocking. You can't buffer anything, you have no safety net, you just gotta press forward and pray a little bit. And that's the best thing about defense when you think about it. Defense is as interesting as you want to make it. The easiest options don't carry much risk, but have very little reward. But if you're willing to bet it all, you'll be able to turn it back, win the game, and style on that motherfucker. But it can also blow up in your face. Defense is hard, and you need a basic foundation of knowing how to block before you start doing crazy stuff, but once you can go for that riskier stuff and it actually works out, yes! Defense is sick. I couldn't even go over all of it here. You should learn how to play defensively. And I don't mean staying at the back and throwing projectiles. I mean actively looking for gaps in strings to abuse. Finding ways to force your enemy to give up their pressure and let you go back on the offense. Or maybe you can just block and dodge for days until the enemy gets frustrated and gives up. Defense is as cool as you make it. And sometimes it can even be fun. Unless you do this, then you are BITCH!